Hey guys, what's up? By Sactatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this one is going to be on uh, defenses and defensive base building at Town Hall 10, uh, because it's very crucial in uh, wars, uh, both competitive CWL type wars and even kind of mid-level competi competitiveness. Uh, it's pretty much what determines the outcome of the war. Now, whether or not the Town Hall 11 gets two stars is very important also, but typically that does happen. The uh, make or break for the clan uh, is going to be if they can get these Town Hall 10s three-starred most of the time uh, for clans doing wars with the same levels that we're doing in Genesis. So that being said, today we're talking about um, a few strategies for base building. Uh, before I address this, I just want to say for people who are still following the, uh, the everything I talked about in the last video with the, the bands in One Hive, uh, just a quick update for the sake of transparency. It turns out that uh, Karam, after looking into it further, did participate in the last CWL war. Said it might have been a possibility. It turns out he did. Uh, he's a Town Hall 10, I believe, and he used two dip attacks on Town Hall 9s. Now, I'm not certain exactly what his third-party software allows him to do, whether or not it lets him actually uh, get an advantage in his war attacks. Uh, I'm not going to say yes or no because I'm not sure exactly on that. But if it did, um, fortunately, I guess I guess you could call it fortunately, uh, his attacks were pretty, you know, inconsequential, and they were dip attacks. Now, if you need to mod a dip attack, I guess that is kind of sad. But uh, typically, those they're not going to be fails, uh, with a few exceptions, obviously. But anyway, we lost that war too, so you know, don't like losing wars, but at least. It's not like we cheated someone out of a win, uh, so I do sincerely apologize that someone using third-party software, whether or not it affected uh, his attacks in war, uh, he was in the war itself, which is never a good thing. So uh, we're just gonna, you know, look to uh, to kind of regroup and uh, take two L's and then come back and try to turn our season around. So uh, there will still be some great content on the channel uh, leading up to the next uh, CWL matchup in a few weeks, including this video. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it for those of you people. Who are here for the actual video itself. Uh, so that being said, a uh, few things for Town Hall 10. Um, first of all, you have to recognize that at Town Hall 10, a lot of what you're defending against is dip attacks by Town Hall 11s. Uh, you are going to see, if you're maybe a lower level Town Hall 10 especially, some Town Hall 10s come at you, but especially if you're getting closer to being maxed or at least a relatively mid to high level Town Hall 10, uh, you're going to see uh, quite a few Town Hall 11s coming down to dip on you uh, if your base is susceptible. So that's the main thing we're addressing. And uh, what's the main strategy that's being used? Well, I am trying to do an attack meta video that should be out soon talking about the main strategies. But I can say for Town Hall 11's dipping down, it's going to be mostly air attacks. And that's even true for Town Hall 10's coming across to 3-star you. Uh, the main strategy right now is some kind of Go Bo La Loon, uh, which uses like a bowler kill squad with the heroes, then does a La Loon on the rest of the base. Some variation of that is typically what you're going to see. We also see Valks and... Um, and other stuff a little bit, but after miners kind of went out, bowlers, you know, had that slight nerf a little while ago. They're not good in huge numbers as they used to be uh, to a certain extent. So we're seeing mainly air attacks. So let's talk about this base, how it's defending against uh, the air attacks, because that's the main thing. That's going to be the priority. Uh, so getting right into it, the walls. Uh, let's go ahead and just take a look at the walls in general. Uh, keeping in mind the queen is right uh, around here. This is her location in this compartment. Um, you want to have kind of a big, unpredictable compartment around, as you can see like this, surrounding your queen, because you want to make it hard to funnel a kill squad through in, into your queen to get her taken out, then get other things. You want someone who wants to come at your queen to have unpredictable pathing. They can't be sure their bowlers are going to go deep in the base. That's why we have this long compartment like we do. Uh, the town hall also is a high HP building, along with some storages to try to make it more difficult to send a kill squad through. Uh, there's a number of point defense in the area. Probably could be a few more. You don't want to oversell and put all your point defense on the other side because it, it, it becomes too easy to send a kill squad in because there's so little damage so you want to keep your base relatively uniform in terms of point defense maybe have more archer towers at the top um, away from your queen and more cannons at the bottom that's definitely a way to ensure that they don't get much extra value when they come at your queen because uh, the archer towers are much better 
uh, infinitely better at defending against air attacks than cannons are. Uh, so keep that in mind as well. Protect those, uh, or keep those air targeting buildings away from your queen in general, although you want to have a few on that side uh, just for sake of dragons or whatever. Um, but also, besides the walls, um, actually one more comment on the walls, I should say, you have that long compartment like this surrounding your queen. Now you also have kind of, and I'll go back to the walls view, these small compartments around your queen uh, going deeper into the base off to the side, any direction but straight to the outside of the base. Uh, you have kind of small compartments surrounding her. That's limiting the amount of value a jump spell can get really by connecting the queen to inferno towers, to other air defenses. You want to have these buffers in the form of walls and some other storage buildings that make it so that your queen can't be connected to inferno towers as easily. Uh, so you can see here we got small compartment, small compartment, there, there, pretty much every compartment on that side of the base besides the long one I talked about to mess up funneling, pretty much every other compartment is going to be tricky to funnel uh, your troops through, or not funnel your troops through, to connect your troops through. The walls present a barrier, and uh, the main thing you're trying to do is keep your queen away from air defenses, uh, inferno towers, anything that gives them value in a leg up in an air attack. So you can see this one air defense is basically a sacrifice. It's kind of like saying, okay, you know, they'll get it if they come at the queen. Uh, that being said, if they do come from this angle, it might be tricky because the queen, if she stands where this wizard tower is, the um, offensive queen that is, cannot reach that air defense. So they'd have to come around the corner to take out the air defense. So it could actually be technically be tricky from that side. But for the most part, that air defense is relatively easy to take out. Um, but that's only one air defense. The Inferno Towers are probably more important than a single air defense. And these guys are, they could be a little higher even still, but they are relatively high on the base. Uh, there's a, you know, storage here, storage here, some buffers, uh, the walls, like I said, just things to make it difficult to send a kill squad in, get, you don't want them to get one air defense and one Inferno. If you get, if they get two air defenses in Inferno, you're in some big trouble. Um, and the CC troops as well, obviously, is included with that. So, at no means should you give them two air defenses and an inferno tower and the queen. Uh, but if you give one air defense, the inferno, the queen, uh, you know, that's kind of a neutral trade. But even still, you should try to make that as difficult as possible using some of the methods I talked about. Um, moving on, I think I've talked about those first few points I had. Uh, Teslas. Getting, getting a little bit beyond just the initial kill squad, for the actual balloon deployment, these Teslas can be very vicious. Um, they do a ton of damage, and they can be uh, ways to make it difficult to specifically target uh, defenses people thought they could target with balloons. For example, um, if you know people thought they were uh, going to target the wizard tower, boom, Tesla pops up, makes it unpredictable, especially if they're trying to funnel stuff into the inferno tower and they have very specific pathing planned. The uh, Teslas can ruin that. The mortars do a good job with that as well. It's not quite as sneaky, but just putting a mortar, you know, by an archer tower that's exposed, you can see by an archer tower, by a wizard tower, just putting these mortars by archer towers, they do a similar job because on air uh, balloon deployment, you can't target that uh, archer tower directly. The balloons have to stop, take out the mortar, that delays them, uh, gives your air targeting defense, whether it's an archer tower, expo, uh, wizard tower, whatever, gives it more time to take out those balloons, to do damage to the lava hounds, whatever buys time for those defenses. So the mortars help. Um, the Teslas are a little bit sneakier. They can also help. And uh, putting these Teslas also sometimes by cannons, uh, where they're not expecting it, they're not expecting there to be air coverage there, can mess up funneling for certain things. And it's a great way in general to just make it unpredictable uh, for the attacker to know what parts of the base are highly covered by air. This part might not look you know, quite as threatening with just these defenses, um, then also the air defense in the, in the Inferno Tower, I guess. But putting these two here really makes it a hot zone for balloons in any, uh, any other air troops. So that's kind of an unpredictability you can add to your base. Um, let's see what else I have in here. For your own CC troops, uh, it's kind of a tricky thing. And 
the, the thing is, keep in mind that we don't see a lot of queen walks with these air attacks, especially if it's a Town Hall 11 dipping. They typically just send in a kill squad and then uh, use La Luna on the rest. The, the queen doesn't have any healers on her. So therefore, the CC troops aren't being taken out by a queen walk. So your typical Valks, Baby Dragon, that's probably not going to be as effective. They're good at forcing a queen's ability when she's alone on a queen walk. But when it's a kill squad, they're not as effective. I would recommend a Lava Hound because... People almost always have to enter your base to take out the Inferno and stuff like that. So really, there, there's no chance they're just going to ignore the CC because they can't. They have to send in a kill squad. And the Lava Hound's a great way of delaying the Queen and possibly the Warden. Uh, kind of separates the kill squad. Plus, it buys time for your defenses. And because the kill squads aren't, you know, that big, there's a lot being saved for the air part of the attack. Uh, it, that time is going to really, you know, take down the... Uh, take out those troops quicker because there's so few of them and it really will delay them because the queen and the warden are a big part of that kill squad and taking them out of the equation for you know 10 seconds is a big deal so uh see uh, lava hound cc you can try other stuff as well uh, but that's kind of what i think is the most effective at this point in time and it you know valks it does make it a little bit trickier for valks but we'll talk about air or about ground rather in a few minutes um let's see anything else i have uh, written down the traps that we didn't get to that yet. Um, actually, the sweepers. Let's do that first. The sweepers are in these inferno compartments, and if you guys remember, the inferno compartment has evolved a lot. Um, they used to be a little bit bigger to defend against bowlers, but we're not seeing bowlers in huge numbers. Uh, that being said, the infernos are kind of they have this buffer of space which is actually filled by giant bombs, but um, it's technically empty space around them to make it a little bit harder for bowlers if there is a bowler kill squad, but that shouldn't prevent you from putting these air sweepers deep in your base. Um, they are so important to defend against air attacks. They can push back balloons. They pretty much almost require a, a speed spell, whether it's a haste or a rage or even a freeze on the, on the sweeper. They require that spell, so... Putting these things uh, close to the infernos, preferably so they can kind of cover each other. It makes it harder to to kind of go around them when they each kind of cover each other and point towards each other. So that's a good way to do it. You can also have them pointed out the opposite way. It can be more effective, but it's also easier to bypass uh, with a good plan. One thing to keep in mind, just for free spells, uh, I think. I'm not sure if that Inferno in the air defense, I think it's possible for them to be fr frozen in the same freeze. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you want to avoid that. I think this Inferno, uh, it's kind of staggered one farther away from the air defense. I don't know if that one can be frozen. It looks like it's farther away to me. It might not be. It might just be the angle uh, of the orientation. But try to keep those Infernos, whatever the distance is, away from the air defenses and other important buildings so they don't get that good of high value freezes because you do see quite a few freeze spells uh, being used, usually one per attack to freeze kind of the back end inferno for the balloons. So keep that in mind too. This base doesn't do that good of a job on it, I guess. Um, these air traps, uh, at this point, you know, I used to say put them outside to take out those healers. Might be a better idea to keep them deeper in the base. Make sure they hit those lava hounds. Uh, I'd say two for air defenses that are kind of away from your queen that you expect to be hit. You can see this one has two. This one has two. If there's one that's kind of exposed, it can be taken out kind of by a queen shooting outside the base. Or maybe even this one, you could argue, because uh, the king could kind of enter and take it out on his own, because the pathing is pretty predictable. Uh, be a little more careful. Maybe don't invest, you know, two uh, seeking air mines by an air defense that is, you know, most likely going to be taken out. Use your best judgment. Sometimes you can predict which air defenses will be left up. For example, these two might have a good chance of being left up because they're in a close proximity to each other. Um, and they're probably both the hardest to take out with a kill squad. So maybe move, you know, this one or there we go. This uh, seeking air mine over there really defend against that. Um, and I think I don't know where I put the last seeking air mine. Um, lost somewhere in the in the uh, in the base but you guys see what I mean you know put them by the air defenses they are going to be hit by uh, lava hounds uh, the red air bombs these are kind of on the outside of the base typically try to make it so the lava hounds don't uh, hit them because they are much much more effective on balloons than lava hounds so these are kind of on the outside of the base I also put a few on the inside uh, because sometimes the lava hounds don't go that far in but the balloons inevitably have to go in there so if you put them at kind of just covering those inferno towers like this one is as the balloons approach they'll hit that splash damage 
coupled with the wizard tower and the inferno itself can take out a big group of balloons so keep that in mind too you can have them central in your base also have this air trap um, at this point it might not make much sense to have the skelly trap on ground at least in the middle of your base because we don't see miners much anymore which is what this is mainly to defend against so having that up uh, will allow those um, skellies to take out some of those balloons possibly take out some pups just make it a slower process for cleanup if anything um, and if you have them away from the lava hounds you don't want these guys beating on the hounds you want them on those balloons so keep them away from your air defenses similar to the red air bombs okay uh last thing these other two skelly traps are by the queen just to defend against a kill squad coming directly at her or maybe a queen walk now this base does allow for kind of a queen walk theoretically because the queen can aggro outside the base if something walks by um, there's not a whole lot of other value to be gotten from a similar walk, but keep that in mind, and uh, that's probably not the best idea to have. If you can help it, maybe the queen just deep enough in the base, so, th so this isn't a possibility. Um, pretty much at Town Hall 10, your main priority, and I can't stress this enough probably, your main, main priority is air attacks at this point. Um, it's the main thing used for dips, it's the main thing used for the legitimate Town Hall 10 v Town Hall 10 3 stars. That being said... There is definitely a reason to defend against ground. We see Valks go for three stars occasionally. Uh, we see other kind of niche air attacks to, or niche ground attacks too, uh, depending on the base. So just do the basic stuff. Um, don't get carried away with your design. Troll Teslas, by the way, before I get into that, I want to say Troll Teslas can be a good idea if you feel like your base is going to be fresh threed by a Town Hall 11. If you're kind of at risk of that. You can put a troll test out there. No shame at Town Hall 10 for doing it. It can be very effective. Um, okay, before this video gets too long, let's just wrap up with the ground uh, part of this base. Just the basic things. The air defenses are kind of important for a ground attack because oftentimes, more often than air attacks, they involve a queen walk, uh, especially those kind of... Uh, go Vaho whatever attacks that use the Valks so keeping these air defenses inside the base so they can't be taken out during a queen walk keeping them you know four tiles between them and the wall um, so they can't be taken out like I said that is going to be important because it'll help uh, the air defense take out the healers and that really limits the ability for the attacker to do queen walks that go uh, any distance around the outside of the base because the, uh, the, the the healers will wander too close and the air defenses will take them out. Also, keep in mind that might mean your sweepers shouldn't point out because that can help push the healers away from the air defense. So that's just a small thing to keep in mind, not that big of a deal. Um, besides that, uh, spring traps are another good way. Just find these spots between defenses uh, with these kind of one tile gaps between them. Great spots for spring traps where Valks, where Hogs are going to go, um, stuff like that. Giant Bombs, I put mine by the Infernos because uh, typically if they're doing a ground attack, something has to go in there and take out the Inferno. You can put them in other spots as well. I have a few in the core. I wouldn't stack them up all in the core like I used to. Remember, miners aren't being used much anymore, so maybe spread them out a little bit. We see Hogs uh, a little bit. You don't want to just have your base be completely packed in the middle and have it be taken out by like a second bounce of a bowler or a queen or something that doesn't even enter the compartment. So keep those spread out a little bit more, I'd say. Uh, but in general, there's not much I have to say. Uh, keep your expos up, obviously, for dragons, for air attacks in general. Keep those expos up. It's definitely worth it. Um, much more important that they have the ability to shoot air troops than that extra three tiles of range. So I think I covered pretty much everything. Uh, this video mainly designed to uh, help you guys defend against air attacks, both dip and Town Hall 10 attacks. Uh, and if you get hit by a ground attack, you know, it happens. If it goes for a three-star, that's unfortunate. You definitely want to keep your uh, that in mind while designing your base, but your main priority, like I said, should be air attacks at this point in the game. So here's my base. Uh, I'll look at the walls too. Um, I wouldn't recommend copying this. This is kind of a hastily designed base. You guys can probably do better, but use the principles I talked about in it. 
um, and that should serve you well as you you know do CWL wars or whatever you're involved in. So thanks for watching this video. Hope it helps. Let me know if it does. Uh, for those of you Town Hall 10s, look forward to finally getting to that attack meta video soon, as well as some other videos. I'm going to be going over to Alpha soon, I think, to do some wars. I might not be in them, but I can at least record other people because uh, a significant portion of our clan is still able to war uh, because they weren't faced with the association ban that some people got. So I uh, look forward to that, and I guess I'll see you guys then. Bye, Sectatron out.